Flash for Freedom by George MacDonald Frazier, book review. So after having finished the previous two books in the Flashman series, Flashman and Royal Flash, I'm now moving on to the third book in the Flashman series, Flash for Freedom. This book covers a lot of ground geographically. It starts off in England, then it goes to Africa, and then it goes to the, to the United States. Uh, it also covers a lot of diverse historical ground. Uh, the 1848 Chartist demonstration in England is a major plot point. Uh, British politician Disraeli plays a major role. The African slave trade pops up. Sorry, it does not, more, it's more than pops up. It's, it's a major part of the book. Uh, King Gizo and his Amazon warriors. The Underground Railroad and Abraham Lincoln himself is in this book. But the bulk of this book is uh, in the United States, and it's about the Underground Railroad. Now, when I was first sold on this Flashman series by a British friend of mine, uh, I was told that every, every book in the series has Flashman visiting a different part of the British Empire, uh, and there's a bit of an exoticism in these books as you're going all around the world. This book was mostly in the United States, and it was about a subject I already knew a lot about, or knew something about, the Underground Railroad. Yeah, you know, this is something that's covered in American schools and history classes and stuff like that. Um, so I thought, initially I felt a little bit like I was getting cheated out of an exotic Flashman adventure, but uh, actually, a lot of these Flashman books do take place in the United States. Um, this is one of three books, to my memory, uh, that take place mainly in the United States. So, this isn't an aberration, this is just part of the way Flashman works. Um, what I found most interesting about this book, however, and, and this comes into the international part of it, uh, is the international politics of slave trading, which form a major part of the plot of this book. So, I didn't fully realize this, but at this point in time, uh, in the 1840s, slavery was still legal in the U.S., but the slave trade had been outlawed. So you could own slaves in the South, but you could no longer go to Africa and buy slaves and bring them over to the U.S. Slavery was still legal, but bringing slaves in from Africa had been illegal. Uh, I forget when that happened, I think maybe 1815. Uh, I don't remember, um, but the, 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 the slave trade was illegal, and it was illegal both in the U.S. and Britain. Um, so, uh, at a point in the book, Flashman finds out that against his will, he's ended up on a slave trading vessel. And he's horrified, not for moral reasons, he's, he's Flashman, of course, he doesn't have a moral conscience, but he's worried that because this is now a legal offense, he could get caught and hanged for being on a slave, slaving vessel. As they're on this slaving vessel, they have to avoid both the British and the American Navy, Navy ships. Which, uh, again, uh, this was news to me, but apparently at this time, the British and the Americans were patrolling the African coasts, uh, trying to capture slaving ships uh, and to destroy them. Uh, apparently, the British Navy at this time was even going as far as to attack and burn any known slaving out, slave trading outposts along the coast. Uh, and if a vessel was captured even without slaves, it could still be condemned if it had slaving equipment, you know, like chains for manacling slaves, etc. Now, the American government was doing the same thing, but the American government would not let the British search any of its ships. Only the American Navy could search American ships. So because of this, uh, the safest thing to do for the slave traders was to fly an American flag. Now, you, you would still have to avoid the American Navy because the American Navy was also looking out for slave traders. But without the American flag, then both the British and the American Navy could search you. If you had the American flag up, then only the American Navy could search you. So you've kind of cut your danger by half in that case. Now, all of this detail is integrated into the story, but as always with these Flashman books, 
Uh, there are in notes and then you can go to the back and then George MacDonald Fraser has added in more historical detail in the in notes. I found it all fascinating. I, I had no idea about the international politics of slave, slave trading at this time. And I, I didn't fully appreciate that there was a period of history of about, I don't know, 50 years or so, where slavery was legal, but the slave trade was illegal. I, I guess I just kind of assumed they both became illegal at the same time, but, but that wasn't true. Um, yes, other positives of this book. Uh, Disraeli uh, is... In the beginning of this book, he doesn't have a big role, but he has a couple of brilliant lines. Uh, he gets a couple of brilliant dry lines in response to Flashman's typical tactless comments. Uh, there's a running parody of Uncle Tom's Cabin, which I read way back in high school, I vaguely remember. Uh, and there's a scene where Flashman is crossing the Ohio River uh, that's very reminiscent of a scene in Uncle Tom's Cabin, uh, but takes on a rather bizarre comical twist with Flashman. And I don't want to spoil it here. You'll recognize it soon enough when you read the book, if you're at all familiar with Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uh, the climax of the book did seem slightly too ridiculous to, be, to be believable, but, uh, you know, I guess that's the kind of story these books are. Uh, these books are mixing in historical detail with an element of the ridiculousness. So, all in all, uh, another delightful Flashman book. I really enjoyed this one, and I felt like I learned a lot from it.